Hello everyone, we are back with our familiar blackboard. I will make one last video with this blackboard. I will deal a bit with the secondary now that it has transformed. And I will also show you how faulty capacitors behave. And we will now see when we really change the capacitors. Why do we do this recap that we all talk about? First of all, for those who haven't done it, subscribe to my channel and enable notifications to receive new videos. So since the blackboard does not have faulty capacitors, we will simulate to see what the oscilloscope will show. I will cut the capacitor. This one here, it's a 24 volt capacitor. I will cut one leg of its connector to show you how the scribe counts with the capacitor and without the capacitor. To understand that if it has lost the capacitance of the capacitor or if it is completely open, the scribe will show different things with a good capacitor and different things with a bad one. So I'm turning the ignition on. We see here that the fuel indicator is on. I have connected the bulb to the 24 volts on the capacitor above it. Now let's see in the load, and I will now measure the output at 24 volts with the voltmeter. Without the capacitor, I will put a resistor. I will put the resistor here in the capacitor, and I will put the probe of the voltmeter at the output here at 24 volts without the capacitor. Now we see here what appears. We see a wave-shaped igniter. What should have been a straight line if it is not continuous, correct? We see that there is no correct outlier because the capacitor is missing. Either if the capacitor is faulty, it will have lost portability. Then we will see the same waveform again and it repeats that something is not right with this capacitor and we need to replace it. Now I will connect the capacitor on top to see what it should normally show. If the density is right and if everything is not good on the power supply, at the power supply exit, continue answering me. Volume 1 won't stick the density to be able to shorten it, shorten the foot, and watch it straight ahead. What it looks like with the density and without the density. To compare the transformations and the difference in the volume on the lamp, I have shown in previous video I had made an upturn. How to behave polymeter and paragraph measurements. I'll put it for that in the description. See it if you want to. Well, I've put the food. This is the transformation that should show it. When there is, when the denser is right, you are seeing a divine line and it shows the songs the paratrooper has. So is the correct transformation. While if I connect it without the density, you see that this pregnancy, the sawing that makes it does, and we see that the tension in the lamp lowering. So look now, here is the density. This is without the density. See and lower the volume on the lamp and the pregnant cell form is changing. Becomes a sawdust. Here it is said with the density, straight line, i.e. straight, always in DC, the paragraph. And if we remove the density, makes this sawdust. Wave that is created. And this sawing becomes larger as the load becomes larger. That is, if we have a large load, it also creates a large wave motion. If we have a small load, we have a small wave motion. I will show it again over here. You see it without the density. You see here the density that it creates. And it is also on the frequency of the wobbler. And with the density, without the density, and with the density, you see the intensity changing in the bulb. So when in an output of a power supply, we see this sawing with our oscilloscope, we go to say that something is not right. With the capacitors, then it needs capacitor change. Then we do the photocells. As we say, then we deal with capacitors. In no other case do we open the power supply and capacitors start changing. So in the Couture, I will now tell you another peculiarity. They have the palm power supplies at their output. They have protection from short circuit, so if a short circuit is found at the exit of the pallet feeder, it will not burn, nor will it blow a fuse. It will not struggle at all. All it will do is stop the conveyor to work, because it is jammed, with the feedback, the report, and it will simply stop its operation. I will show you right here now, directly with a jumper, I will connect the 24 volt. Over here, please take a look, I'm connecting the 24 volt. The power supply has stopped, you see, and it starts again on its own. I'm reconnecting it. 
Here, the power supply stops, nothing is burning. It just stops the power supply to work, and when I reconnect it, it works again at this time. The operation sometimes confuses us, and we search to find in the primary the problem. While it is in the secondary, the same happens with the diodes. You see, if a diode is short-circuited, the power supply stops again if it works, and when it unshorts, it starts again, and sometimes the diode is burnt or the capacitors are short-circuited. And we have this problem that the power supply is not working at all, and it's not the fault from its input to the primary. But it's here in the secondary, the same happens with the entire station of the power supply. Now we had the 24 short circuits. If I short circuit here, the 12 that are in some two here with the 12 volts, you see, the power supply stops again. And as soon as I open it, it works, nothing burns, because it has this protection, either two doses or on the density above. You see here, short circuit, its operation stops. I let the operation again, of course this does not happen. The same goes for the capacitors on the input. Here was 220. If someone shorts the density from there, we have an explosion and the safety is triggered and everything happens. The same goes for the diodes. Of course, at the entrance, one at the entrance, another at the exit at the top feeder. And from there, they stand out many times from which side we need to search to find the fault, from the entrance or from the exit of the top feeder. To tell you the truth, when I make power supplies, my first move is to put the multimeter, the blazer, that is, you see over here capacitors and diodes, if they have a short circuit. So I start at the input and at the output, always without power like this, I put on the blazer and start counting on the capacitors and diodes, two or three components at the input and output. If I have a short circuit, a quick check that is, and then I plug in and start measuring voltages and the rest that I have shown you in the previous videos. So these are the tips I had to tell you about the power supplies. In general, I believe I helped many for the way of thinking and repair of the upper feeders. If you liked the video, give it a like. I'm waiting for your comments and your questions, and good continuation to everyone. Hello, 